lot of those pieces either got lost or destroyed. They didn't really care about those. So, you know, Fantasia, Dumbo, uh, even, even some of the 50s stuff, Alice in Wonderland, uh, those type of things, you, you don't see a lot of work from those. So they're, they're usually quite valuable, uh, especially to collectors. Um, and then after, what happened actually at that time, Crevassier used to, they would take the cells, they would mount them on a, uh, a different background, and then they would sell them to collectors and the general public. But then after a couple of years, people lost interest, they were a little expensive, so they kind of closed down their gallery. Um, and then up until really about 1955, till Disneyland, the park was opened, uh, that's when they started to uh, reissue the cells. They sold Lady and the Tramp, um, Sleeping Beauty was a big one. So you really will see a lot of Sleeping Beauty cells. Most of them aren't in great condition because people would buy them, they were two or three bucks. And they just hang them as they were, put them in a kid's room, you know, whatever. I mean, some of those cells now are worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and, uh, you know, two or three bucks back then, you know, just like, well, yeah, I'm sure we bought a lot of those. But, um, and then here we have Rockadoodle. Uh, this was a Don Bluth production. Some people might be familiar with that. I think these two here are more or less a uh, publicity. Um, I see a lot of the cells, but I've never seen the drawing. So when I saw the drawing, it, it interests me, and I, I said, well, I'm going to pick that up. So I don't know if that was actually used to make the actual original publicity cell, because there are some small deviations with it. This could have been done in a show. I really don't know. Uh, I couldn't really get any history on it. However, again, I mean, one of the main points of collecting anything uh, as a reformed baseball card collector um, you learn to buy what you 